Closing arguments. I'm Ted Rowland filling in tonight for Vinnie Politan. We're going to begin this hour continuing our coverage of the Idaho student murders. Tonight marks one year since Xander Kernodal, Ethan Chapin, Kayla Gonzalez, and Madison Mogan were brutally murdered. Tonight we're going to focus on what truly matters in this case, and that is the victims. This is a live look at the vigil that is just getting underway at the University of Idaho. We're going to dip into this coverage. We'll bring you moments of it, of this gathering throughout this next hour. But before we do anything, we want to pause and remember Kaylee, Maddie, Zana, and Ethan. Kaylee, you will never be forgotten. We will live fight for you every day with your mentality in our mind. We love you so much. She embodied her own sunshine, and that's when her skies became limitless. I sent you my heart. I met Charlie D'Amelio, Jack. Most important is love, like it's the only thing you know how. Nothing even matters except love and human connection. Do you know what you are? Maybe I should have something. No matter how I was lucky enough to be able to explore life with Maddie. Maddie was the best at spreading love. Santa was the funniest person I knew and made me laugh every time I spent time with her. Santa, you will not be forgotten. You have impacted so many lives and have given people so much love. Oh, sweet love of mine. Ethan was always someone you could count on to make you smile and uh, cheer up your mood. And I feel so lucky to have shared so many great memories with him. Minions, tonight we steal the moon! Sweet love of mine. Through all this, I hope we can all look through that dark tunnel and see the light and follow that light. And I pray that we have justice someday. All right, let's head out to Moscow, Idaho, right now, where the vigil has just uh, gotten underway. And uh, listen in. Spending this time with close friends and family. Before we get started tonight, I'd also like to direct our folks to gather into the field. And uh, we have the whole space open tonight, so I encourage you all to uh, um, come together. My name is Tanner McLean, president of the Associate Students, University of Idaho. November 13th, 2022 is a day we will never forget. Now, I ask each of you to take a moment to reflect upon where you were on that day. A year ago today, I held a distinct memory of holding laundry in my room. It was a typical Sunday morning in Moscow, Idaho. When the van alert face first came across my phone, I was in disbelief. I refuse to believe this news as something this tragic could not, help, could not happen in our home here in Moscow. As the day continued, more information was revealed. For that entire day, our student body experienced a range of emotions that cannot be quantified. Shock, anger, and sadness were all felt at Monarch students that day. No words will ever be profound enough to move on from what our community experienced last year. But this vigil will demonstrate the love our student body has at least four amazing individuals. We have asked those who not attend this vigil tonight to light up their porches from 6 to 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time in remembrance of Zanna, Ethan, Kaylee, and Maddie, lighting up the world as these four vandals did for their friends and family. I also want to acknowledge that there is currently a vigil ongoing at the University of Idaho Boise Tea Law School. No matter where you find yourself tonight, the vandal family is here. And on this day, across all of Idaho, we are all vandals. Support and help is available. Anyone needing assistance can go to the hand, handrails located to my left near the front, and there will be university staff available to assist and provide support during and after the vigil. There is also ongoing help and support available to you as students to the Counseling and Mental Health Center and via the Dean of Students Office Vandal Care Support Program. Reach out if you are struggling or know of someone who is. Help is available. There will be four speakers tonight. We will share the happy memories of Maddie Mogan, Kaylee Gonzalez, Zanna Canodal, and Ethan Chapin. After each speaker, there will be a moment of silence to reflect on the good these four individuals brought into the world. Candles are available at various tables around the lab and lawn. There is a limited supply, and if you don't have a candle, that is okay. You can use your phone light to participate. At this time, we'll begin lighting candles. 
Please be courteous to those around you and share your candlelight with others. All right, you see there's going to be four speakers coming up, and now uh, they are distributing those candles. We'll be watching this uh, throughout the hour, and uh, we'll go back in when we hear um, the um, speakers that talk specifically about the victims. Let's bring in Al Wunsch the third, Erica Wilson and Darnell Crossland. They are all here with us. It's a live tank. Uh, boy, Vinny wishes he were here uh, <laughs> sitting on this couch. This might be television history uh, with uh, Darnell and Al in the same room. Eric in charge of keeping them apart. The, um, I don't think anybody's gonna fight about this one. It's just uh, heartbreaking and you see the people gathering there. Um, we talked to Steve Gonzalez, the Gonzalez family attorney earlier. They don't wanna call it an anniversary because it, they, th these families are just being tortured. Uh, it, it's taking so long. Al, it, there's no trial date. Um, Yes, it's a four, it's a quad murder with a death case, but that's a bit odd, is it at least throw out a, a, a possible trial date to give people something to hold on to? Well, you don't want to get people's hopes up for something and then have it delayed, delayed, delayed. I think that's worse. I think the anticipation of a date certain gives these people the idea that this is going to be done. And as we all know, trials are not that way. I mean, everything gets adjourned. There's always a good reason, and then there's always a reason the judge will give it, an adjournment. Mm -hmm. So you give these people a, a cold, hard date, they're all set, ready to go, doing everything they need to do, and then it's adjourned? That up and down is probably worse. Erica, why are we so fascinated by this case? Is it the victims or, and or the crime and, and the horror that um, uh, we, people just can't get their head around? It, it, it's both. Right? Like, I, my daughter turns 18 on Thursday, right? So she's going to college. And for all the parents who have children, right, to think that you send your child to college in a small town in Idaho, no less, you think that you're sending them to a safe place. So for this to happen to not only one student, but four students is something that is literally unthinkable. And so everybody, our, our, the nation is kind of gripped by this because it's like, we want to make sure, how did this happen? What were the signs? How could we all do better to make sure it doesn't happen? And then you have that, juxtapose that, and then you have Brian Kohlberger. And this guy is clearly one of the most narcissistic sociopaths. He thinks he's smarter than everybody in the room, and he's playing all these legal maneuvering games. And so we're kind of fascinated by him as well. For whatever reason, this country is always fascinated with the murderers and the serial killers and that sort of thing. And so we have that juxtaposition of he's kind of titillating and tantalizing. And then you have the tragedy of these four innocent students who were literally just going off to educate themselves. And so we really want to figure out because we still don't know. We know the, we think we know the who, we know the what, we don't know the why. Right. And we may never, Darnell, because the, um, unless he, or whoever did this, he's just accused, tells everybody why. Um, that is, it could be, he could be, uh, we'll never know, right? But do you think at the end of the day there was a connection? We had his phone, according to that affidavit, in the area of 12 times, five months prior during that period. Do you think he was, whoever did this was targeting and, and, and there was a connection? Absolutely. Um, the, these are definitely crimes of opportunity. Um, when the kids are on, ca on college campuses, people seem to know their comings, their goings. Um, and for whatever reason, they're watching these kids, um, whether it's economic opportunity or some sexual fantasy or mental uh, breakdown that somebody's having. Um, these kids are like sitting ducks. And um, as Erica just said, you send your kids to school, um, they're in one specific, specific space and they can just get picked off. Um, and, and that's what's kind of disheartening. And the fact that Kohlberger or somebody that we would least expect, I think is, is astonishing. Yeah, and they did nothing wrong. And you know, Steve Gonzalez was you know, talked and he you know, his racked his head. What, what, did, what could I have told Kaylee to do differently? Nothing. He, they went out, they were at the buddy system, they took a professional driver home, a very short you know, area. They did everything right. They were in, literally in their beds. Um, when this took place. Al, the most compelling evidence at this point from this probable cause affidavit is the DNA on that knife sheath. 
let's say you're defending this individual. I'm not saying you would, but if you, if you were, um, <laughs> how do you get around that? Well, I mean, that's a tough call. That's going to be the hardest thing in this entire case, and it's going to fall on that. Um, the interesting thing is that if that is the best thing that they have, that one little aspect of DNA, maybe the rest of the case isn't as strong. And that's where things get a little dicey. You know, you mentioned about why. Okay, well, you know, prosecution doesn't have to prove motive, and that's never a situation, but that's something that everyone wants to know. And that may be the thing that Kohlenberger may be able to use for his advantage at some point to say, put their minds at ease, let me tell you why this happened, and mm. work out a plea arrangement that way. Cut a deal, avoid DNA, the In terms of DNA, you know it's definitely going to be a transfer argument, because he's on the professor's on the campus, the kids are on the campus, and DNA transfer is a huge area of criminal law that we talk about. I could touch this chair. You could touch it, and you, my DNA could be somewhere where you went later. Right. You so. are never in the same in that room or Correct. touch that item. Let's do this. Let's go back to that vigil because uh, there is a new speaker now uh, talking specifically about the, one of the victims. Let's listen. And seeing all the lives that they touched brings me as much joy as it does sadness. When reaching out to friends, there were many kind words that were used to describe Maddie. The most common being kind, loving, genuine, driven. Stunning, outgoing. This list came along forever, but most of all, bright. Maddie was a bright person. She had a bright smile. She had a bright future. Maddie was bright. She was bright in every way that a person could be. Maddie was the kind of person who made sure everyone felt welcomed and looked cared for. It was nearly impossible to not be smiling when you were around her. She made every person that she interacted with feel loved. A memory of her from a friend was the first time I met Maddie, she pulled me aside and asked if I wanted to go do something to get up the next day. From another friend. All the memories I have of Maddie consist of everything good. She always had a smile on her face. She truly made any room she walked into a brighter place. No matter where I saw Maddie, she would always go out of her way to come and say hi to me and always put a smile on my face. Maddie's kindness and gentle heart are missed so deeply. Many of us shared this experience of how generous and inviting she was. Maddie was one of the first five guys I ever met. She was so welcoming and I knew that if there were people like her there, five guys was a great place to be. She was always a shoulder to cry on, a friend to laugh with, and most of all, a compassionate friend. Maddie cared for her friends in such a deep and wonderful way. To be a friend the way that Maddie is, is to be sincere and endlessly loving. The love that many of us receive from her, but a feeling kind that can never fade. I will never forget that day. Before I knew, I had spent the morning getting coffee and laughing with my friends. I know that given the chance, Maddie would have been doing the same exact thing. That experience is such a small moment that many of us share, but often do not think about. But that morning, I learned how important those small and seemingly insignificant moments can be. I had no idea how drastically different the next hours, days, and weeks of our lives were going to be. I came home and almost immediately knew that something was wrong. All right, listening to a tribute to Maddie Mogan. Madison no, Mogan, no, one of the four victims. We need to squeeze a break in here. I think Tank's going to be here all hour, and when we come back, we'll continue to honor the victims of this tragic case. Go back to Idaho. Stay with us. I've worked hard all my life. I've gone from being a local reporter to becoming a law student to then even going on to teach other lawyers all before I came to Court TV. As a journalist, lawyer, and teacher, I learned the secret to success is speaking in your authentic voice. And I bring that lesson to my show, Opening Statements, every morning on Court TV. Opening Statements with Julie Grant. Weekday mornings at 8, 7 central, only on Court TV. Chapter President of Alpha Phi. With me is my sorority sister, Molly Gray. 
Tonight, I am speaking on behalf of my chapter to share memories and stories about our dear sister, Kaylee Gonzalez. When I first met Kaylee, I was an incoming freshman who just ran home on bid day. I got to know Kaylee through her position as Big Little Chair. Getting a bigger little sister is one of the most exciting parts of Greek life. Today, I'm going to read a letter by somebody who couldn't be here today, Kaylee's little sister in Alpha Phi, Jaden Anderson. Today, we are gathered a year after an event that shook many of our lives. No words could make this day any less hard. Kaylee, Maddie, Zana, and Ethan still live on in stories and memories shared, and they will always be guiding those who love them. This is why it is so important that I tell you who Kaylee was and still is to me, and that you understand the tremendous absence of her presence, as well as Ethan's, Zana's, and Maddie's. Kaylee Gonzalez had a contagious laugh. I mean, you could hear it in the other room. It was so unapologetically her. I miss this laugh every day. She laughed often, at herself and with others. Kaylee was beautiful inside and out. When we lived in Alpha Phi together, she could often be found getting ready, sitting on the floor with her makeup sprawled and her face so close to the damn mirror. She loved getting ready to go and hang out with her people. It didn't matter what we were going to do. All that mattered was the people she was going to do it with. She always put others first and always prioritized her friends and her family. Kaylee was special. The memory I cherished with her is the sleepover we had. I remember us tucked in and laughing at the movie we just put on with no care in the world. This is how I remember her. Giggly, beautiful, kind and funny, so naturally herself. I loved being in her presence and it is one that I will miss for the rest of my life. Kaylee gave me this book my freshman year called The Sun and Her Flowers. In the book lies a page that states, despite knowing they won't be here for long, they still choose to live their brightest lives, sunflowers. Kaylee's favorite flower was sunflowers. I think about this quote every day, and it almost feels like her future self was trying to tell me something, or that this was fate bringing this to me now. This book is all about grief, and it just makes me think that I know she's watching out for me, even if she's not here. I asked some of Kaylee's friends to send me some memories about her, and I would love to share them because they are all so true of Kaylee. A member of PC19 says, Kaylee was a one-of-a-kind person. There are not enough kind words in the world to help show someone who didn't know her what kind of a person she was, but anyone who knew her did. The following are more quotes from members of PC19 and people Kaylee was close with. I'm incredibly grateful for Kaylee's spontaneity and desire to always take pictures of everything. I cherish those pictures we took. Right, the, va the vigil in uh, Moscow, Idaho continues as people gather to remember Kaylee, Maddie, Ethan, and Zana, the think tank still with us here. Um, uh, Darnell Crossland, Erica Wilson, and Al Wunsch the third. Erica, to you first, the um, case against Cobra, we were just talking about the DNA and, and how, and Darnell pointed out how it can transfer. You know, people, you, you watch these shows and you think, DNA, it's over. Um, but there's more to it. The problem for Kohlberger is that there's more. And it's not just DNA found in the house. It's DNA on the knife sheath with the missing murder weapon. And you have him in a white Elantra. Uh, white Elantra was driving around. And, and his phone records. Eh. It, it you could get rid of the DNA-ish. But, or get, get a little, a juror or two to think, eh, I don't know. But when you start to pile and pile, um, I like Al's idea. This, this, <laughs> this might be a, 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 an opportunity for Kohlberger, if indeed he is guilty, to say, listen, I'll tell you what was in my head. Just let's save me, uh, save myself. Yeah, that, that will never happen. He is such a sociopath. He fancies himself a criminologist. He will <clears throat> never concede. All of this is just a game for him. Right, he is, he is enjoying, he's relishing in all the attention that he's getting. So I don't think we'll ever get any concessions or any, any pleas on this. And, and I'm not so certain, I, I wouldn't throw in the towel just yet. I don't know that we have necessarily the smoking gun. Yes, we have the DNA. Yes, we have the car. But these are all things with a good criminal attorney can all be just kind of characterized as circumstantial. If you can tear apart the DNA, then what else do you have? He has a white Elantra that I, I see white Elantras up and down the road all the time. So it, all of these things can legitimately probably be explained away. 
But again, we haven't gotten to the trial. We don't know what the defense has up their sleeve. They can pick apart DNA. I've seen it happen before, and you think you got a slam dunk case, and you go into it feeling that way, and then it gets picked apart by experts. So I don't know that we have, you know, the surefire Matlock moment that we think that we're going to have at the last five minutes of the show. That's, you know, we need to stay tuned for that. Mm. Um, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, we do have to wait, right? And, I mean, he's presumed innocent uh, right now, and um, so we do have to wait. Let's uh, let's go back. The uh, new speaker has just taken the podium. Let's listen in a bit. Good evening. Thank you for being here tonight. My name is Anna Miller. Beside me, Elise Von Bargain, my close friend. And I will be speaking in remembrance of a woman whose name I share. It's Anna Kermoda. A lot of people say you don't know what you have until it's gone. However, Xander Carnival does not fit into that category. Pi Beta Phi was blessed to have Xander's presence, blessed to have known her, and to call her a sister. She made an impact on our organization that will never be forgotten. She meant so much to everyone around her. She was a crucial member of the team. A light in the darkness, a smile when you needed one, a ball of energy. She was full of life, and she lived her life to the fullest. A lot of people saw her as the life of the party. Everyone strived to be a little more like Xander. A little more vibrant, adventurous, kind, outgoing, empathetic, positive, charming, bright, and warm-hearted. This is just the beginning of a list that could go on forever. When I asked my chapter what words would be best to describe her, one of Zayma's close friends said, you couldn't describe her because she was everything and more. She was one of a kind. She was entirely herself all the time. A beautiful aura followed her everywhere she went. There was always a smile on her face. She was a very contagious person. Zayla was one of those people that you could not possibly be sad around. She made friends feel unapologetic for being themselves. No one ever had anything negative to say about Zayla, and that is something that I admire. Nothing could possibly measure how valuable she was. Zayla not only was a very unique person, but Zayla is a very unique name.